Henry Alden pushed a cart full of luggage through the bustling airport of Dublin, Ireland. All around him, people were walking very fast and pulling large suitcases. A pilot and two flight attendants wearing navy blue uniforms passed by, their shoes clicking on the tile floor. On the public address system, a voice said, Last call for flight 217. Airports always made the Alden children feel very excited. They loved traveling to new places. I wonder how long it will take to get to the castle, said 12-year-old Jessie Alden. She looked at her watch and reset it to the local time, six hours later than their home in Greenfield. Between the time change and the long flight, the children were feeling tired. But they had been looking forward to their vacation in Ireland for a long time and couldn't wait to explore the castles and the beautiful countryside. Grandfather glanced at the map in his hand. According to the map, it should take about two hours to get where we're staying. Grandfather was also carrying Benny, who at six was the youngest Alden. Benny had been asleep when the plane landed and was just starting to wake up. His head rested on Grandfather's shoulder. Erin, the owner of the castle, said she would pick us up right outside the airport. Ten-year-old Violet walked ahead of the other children and snapped a picture of a sign that read, This Way to Dublin, with an arrow pointing toward the doors. Violet was planning to make a scrapbook of this adventure when the Aldens returned home, and she thought a picture of the sign would be perfect for the cover. The automatic doors opened with a whoosh, and the Aldens walked out into the sunshine. Taxis were lined up along the curb. What a beautiful day, Violet said, snapping another picture. We're lucky the sun is out, Henry said. I've read that it rains a lot in Ireland. We don't mind a little rain, said Violet. She took off her purple sweater and tied it around her waist. We always found fun things to do on rainy days when we lived in the boxcar. After their parents died, the Alden children had run away. They were afraid of their grandfather because they thought he was mean and they wouldn't like living with him. In the woods, the children had found an abandoned boxcar and made it their home. They had lots of adventures and even found their dog, Watch, in the woods. He became part of their family, too. When their grandfather found them, they realized he wasn't mean at all. Grandfather took the children to his home to live with him and his housekeeper, Mrs. McGregor. Grandfather brought the box car to his home and put it in the backyard to use as a clubhouse. That must be our ride, Jessie said, pointing to a white van that said Dunkerig Castle in green letters on the side. Grandfather and the children walked toward the van just as a woman got out. She had a long red braid that hung down over her shoulder. Cade Mila Falta, she said. That means a hundred thousand welcomes. I'm Erin. The children introduced themselves, and Henry and Aaron loaded the luggage into the van. Grandfather helped Benny get buckled in. Benny tried to wake himself up, but as soon as they started driving, he closed his eyes again. Poor Benny, said Violet. He seems so tired. You all must be tired after that long trip, Aaron said, and hungry too. Let's stop for lunch when we get to Hoth. Benny sat up and opened his eyes. Did someone say lunch? Everyone laughed. I thought lunch might wake you up, Grandfather said. Aaron took the scenic route toward the seaside village of Hoth. The tall cliffs alongside the road were bright green and towered over the ocean below. White seagulls sailed through the air hunting for fish. Aaron told the children about the sights. Down there is Dublin Bay, she said, pointing to the water. And that's Bailey Lighthouse. She pointed to a narrow white building perched on the edge of a cliff. It was a steep drop down to the ocean where the waves crashed against the rocks. Erin continued, The village of Hoth has been a busy fishing port for hundreds of years, but the fog can make it dangerous. The lighthouse shines to warn the boats when they're getting too close to the cliffs. Violet shivered, thinking about how scary a shipwreck would be. I'm so glad we traveled by plane instead of boat, she said. I think a ship would be exciting, Henry said. He was 14 and liked adventure, as long as the captain knew what he was doing. Don't worry, Violet, Grandfather said. Ships don't rely on lighthouses anymore. Now they use computers to navigate the ocean.